Hello, Via. Uh, just hold on. We are going to be live at 8 sharp.
We'll join you in a few. So be patient.
Hello, viewer. Uh, thanks for thanks for joining us this uh, evening on this uh, on this show. So, the aim of this particular show. Um, let me just adjust a while. Yeah. So, the aim of this particular show, real talk show, hosted by yours truly, is to discuss uh, cross cutting issues that are affecting now. People live in during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So today we are going to discuss uh, on uh, how to manage our emotional health. All right, managing emotions at this particular at at this particular point in time. So if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, kindly go ahead and subscribe and. Uh, and after that, you'll be notified every time we go live or when we have a or, or, or when we even shoot another another video. So with me today, I'm joined by none other than Albert Migowa. So he's an emotional intelligence facilitator, but I'm going to allow him to first uh, of course introduce himself. So Albert, how are you doing? I'm fine, Violet. How are you? I'm, I'm well, I'm well. What about you? I'm very well. Keeping well, just uh, right. under quarantine like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can yes. we adjust now the, because we can't see now maybe from the neck down, we can't see you. So maybe it's just the camera. Okay. I guess yeah, so. That, yeah, that's better. Yeah. That's better. Yeah, so before, so before Albert goes okay. on, I'd like to introduce myself. So I'm, my name is Violet Mbiti, and I'm a team leader at uh, Violet Mbiti Foundation. And uh, I chair the working group on political feminism, women empowerment, and women representation in African democracy that brings together youth from the various regions in Africa. So let's say I'm a pan-Africanism, all right? A pan Africanist. Yes, that's the right word. So, yeah, so now to the topic at hand. Um, Albert, you are about to introduce yourself, isn't it? Right. Kindly go ahead. Thank you very much. So, um, once again, I'm very excited to be part of this broadcast today. Um, as mentioned, my name is Albert Mikoa. I do wear very many hats, but I define myself as a trainer, mentor, and coach. Um, I have a background. I'm a trained counseling psychologist, and uh, currently I am doing. Uh, I am an emotional intelligence facilitator. Um, aside from that, I'm also into mentorship, and um, I'm very passionate about young people, specifically the young man. And consequently, I am running. I'm under a project titled Young Men Resilience. It's a project that's been run by the Kenya Red Cross, and it aims to upskill young men in the informal settlement uh, in Mukuru area who are going through a myriad of challenges. For instance, unemployment, drug abuse. So the program seeks to upskill that. So one of the key mental health talks that I do give in that program 
is emotional intelligence. Um, aside from that, I've been, been involved in numerous spaces. For instance, I've uh, I've interest in uh, in much as internet. So consequently, I am a member. I am currently the moderator on internet governance. That is under the Internet Society of Kenya. I'm also sitting on the National Committee on Online Child Safety and Protection, that is by the Communications Authority. And I'm also currently with uh, the First Lego League competition organizers uh, who organize uh, the FLL, which is the First Lego League competition every year. And currently, I'm also doing uh, stuff in the area of programming, uh, specifically coding. Thank you. Oh. Yes, so I can see that uh, you wear many hats, but uh, which is which is also commendable. So I'd like, um, you know, at this particular period of uh, COVID nineteen, it's mm -hmm. like our lives have just come to a standstill. We are right. not we we our, our our lives are not the way they used to be because like at the oh. moment. Uh, we are under lockdown and some people they are under curfew and we were used to socializing interacting with people and uh, meeting different people um, even from all over the world but right now we are stuck and uh, and you are even in the house you are all alone you don't even know what to do so even at this particular time of covid-19 there are many people who have committed suicide all right who have uh, who who have even started even um, even beating their wives, insulting them, because they really don't know how to handle these emotions. Because stress comes at all levels. It comes financially. It also comes emotionally. It comes at various angles. So, as an expert in emotional health how do, how do you expect people now to manage themselves during covid-19 okay uh thank you very much violet um i'd like to kick off the discussion by really uh, defining what uh, emotions are so um uh, just for the benefit of the viewers. So emotions are biological processes that emanate from a part of our brain called the amygdala. So the amygdala concerns itself with um, emotions such as anger, uh, fear, happiness, all those feelings. Now, um, consequently, um, I don't know, I'm sure you've heard of the term fight or flight, all right? Basically, which concerns itself with what issues that um, a positive or a rewarding, we tend to move towards. And things that are negative, we tend to move away from. So, and for instance, um, something positive or a reward, I always say, if you give, if a child does a good deed and you give them a sweet, they'll tend to always want to do that deed so that they can keep on getting the sweet, okay? Uh, an example of a bad deed is that if, for instance, um, you're walking on your way home, and uh, you come across a snake on the road, what do you do? I mean, you tend to scream or run away. So that's the fright. So you move away towards certain things. So consequently, emotions are intense feelings uh, that, uh, th that are either imagined or are real. And uh, they, they come as a result of factors in the environment. And uh, the inf that which is positive makes us move towards, and that which is negative makes us move away. Now, the next thing is the aspect of what is intelligence. Now, intelligence for me is, um, it's been defined differently by different people, okay? And, um, but what uh, many researchers, researchers have agreed upon is that intelligence has two key components. One, the ability to learn from your experience, and two, the ability to adapt to environment, okay? So consequently then, what is emotional intelligence, all right? So emotional intelligence concerns itself with being able to understand and manage your emotions and that of other people, so as to have more productive relationships. So in simple terms, emotional intelligence is all about people's smartness. So then why do you need to be emotionally intelligent, especially at this moment in time? Remember that what the thing that influences behavior, as I've mentioned, 
is emotion. So behavior stems from emotions. And right now we are feeling we have got different feelings. People are happy, others are sad, others are frustrated, others are anxious. So it is very important to understand and know one where you, where your emotions are coming from, and two, what can you do to be able to handle your emotions emotions so you can be more productive and effective as a person and more productive and effective as you interact with people in uh both right now at home and consequently as you move forward in the community so now just to touch a bit more on emotional intelligence so now e emotional intelligence or sometimes called ai or eq that is emotional intelligence or emotional quotient it's a term that came, was, became popular in the mid 90s. And one of the most famous proponents is Daniel Goldman. And he came up with four key proponents of emotional intelligence. That is one, uh, we have self, self, self awareness, which concerns itself with being aware, being able to understand, identify, and evaluating your emotions. And under this, you look at your strengths, your weaknesses, you look at um, how self-confident you as a person and how you're able to actually assess yourself as a person so what can one do to be more self-aware one uh, and something that's very common and very uh, and women do it very well journaling for judging down how you're feeling how you're feeling in the at any given time in the morning that will just help you to vent out and uh, ease certain tensions that you may be feeling at a moment in time Secondly, um, uh, I propose you can actually um, identify feelings associated with a specific role you are in. So for instance, um, how do you feel being a brother? How do you feel being a sister? How do you feel being a boss? How do you feel being a mother? Okay, then um, another thing that I propose that you would perhaps want to try to be more self-aware, an activity would be um, being able to predict how you, certain situations, okay? So for example, um, if certain things make you upset, let's say for example, noise, maybe you're from work, especially as a parent, you're from work and on your way home, you know, work, your work has got its work stress, then you're getting you're on the road, then there's the road stress, then there's the traffic. And when you reach home, you know, there are also, maybe there's a lot of noise and you don't like noise. So what do you do? You, to avoid any kind of conflict, all right, you may want to aim at one, maybe not go into the house immediately, take time to relax, okay? Or uh, do something that uh, will calm you down, okay? Before you get into the house, because you're anticipating some kind of noise, just, just as an example. So when you do that, when, you, when you're able now to calm down and then you're able now to go into the house, you'll not be able now to interact in a much more effective manner. The second aspect I like to talk about is the aspect of self-regulation. And self-regulation here concerns itself with being able to manage your emotions to your benefit. All right? Now, what do you look at here? There are various, there are various aspects under this. We look at each aspect such as initiative, okay, going out to way to do things. We look at being optimistic making the best out of situations. We look at being flexible or adaptable, being able to adjust in various situations, okay? Um, and one way in which you can be, you can be able to manage your, emotional, your emotions well, there are some activities that I would propose you may want to try. Um, for instance, one, identify situations that elicit certain emotions in you so for example you may say one i get angry when let's say people don't complete their tasks then the second thing uh you'd want to say okay fine um since they don't complete their tasks you know that will anger you what will you do yeah in the event that you know uh, they don't complete their task what do you do maybe you will 
not engage them immediately. You may decide to take a walk, okay? And not engage them at that particular time, just to calm down. The third thing I like to talk about is the aspect of social awareness. So social awareness concerns itself with being able to understand and respond to the needs of other people. And under this, we look at various uh, competencies. For instance, one, we have empathy, which is being able to feel and sense the needs of other people. We've got, secondly, we've got organizational dynamics, which concerns itself with being able to understand the politics, dynamics, and attitudes of people, basically group dynamics. And thirdly, service, orientation, service orientation, which concerns itself with responding to the needs of other people. So an example of um, social awareness would be what? Maybe, for instance, a waiter would recommend something better on the menu, okay? Secondly, somebody who... Who, who, who goes who, who does maybe an, who does something extra maybe an employee who goes out of his, his or her way to do extra work other than that which is given to him or her and her, the fourth thing i like to talk about would be self regulation so sorry uh, relationship management so relationship management concerns itself with basically how do you manage your relationship with other people okay and under this um i, I the, the key features of this particular uh, uh feature is the mostly leadership trait so you look at issues such as inspire can you persuade can you uh, can you give visionary leadership secondly you look at um influence are you able to persuade people thirdly a development catalyst are you able to give feedback and help someone grow a change catalyst are you able to cut out with somebody who wants to bring about change in your environment fourthly the aspect of teamwork and collaboration can you work well with people and in teams partnerships can you can you partner with people and uh, conflict management are you able to um you know, resolve conflicts and disputes with people. So what I've just mentioned are the key features or the key traits of emotional intelligence that we need to know and we need to understand. Now, how can our emotions uh, now bring it back to now it's linked to COVID, uh, our current situation. Yeah. For example, I know right now people are feeling very anxious. Yeah. People are stressed and people are anxious. So kindly move your, uh, Albert. Yeah. Kindly move your camera so that your, your whole face can be seen. Yes, there. Continue. Okay, like that, huh? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, so so the, the thing is, um, what uh, in this period of COVID nineteen? Yeah, I was saying. Um, so, yes, the period of COVID nineteen. Uh, this issue of um, uh, we're going through, like for example, issues like stress and anxiety and fear because it's a new pandemic you know uh, people are quarantined your freedom is uh, limited uh, you cannot engage with people so people are feeling a certain way but the thing is how can we handle that anxiety and still be productive one thing i would propose is what you call the deep breathing exercise okay. i think you've heard about deep breathing okay yeah. we take in deep breaths in like a deep breath, one, two, three, four, hold your breath, and exhale, one, two, three, four, five. You know? So the deep breathing exercise will help you, all right? Another thing that can help you is also finding something that, you know, will um, will distract you for a minute, okay, from what is going on. And that would be like uh, reading a book, okay? Taking a walk outside, all right? or even connecting with friends, okay? Either through WhatsApp, either through Facebook Live, or whatever other social media platform. But engage, all right? Talk to people, because when you have a group of people where you can talk, 
you're able not to um you're able to, to to express yourself and you know as you talk the only thing when you talk uh you let feelings out and you and, and again you're when you're sharing ideas you never know what somebody else is going through and through that you're able to help another person okay another thing i like to touch on is the aspect of social distancing okay now uh we know what the social distancing is all about right now which is the distance between us and other people just to prevent the spread of the virus but it's it's really against how we are used to doing things isn't it especially our african traditional practices and how we are as kenyans because we are we are very social people okay and certain norms be it hugging be it uh even kissing uh and handshakes that is not happening right now so we need to uh keep in mind and adjust our mind to the fact that it is very possible that even as the once the dust settles on this pandemic that there'll be a new normal and the new normal will not have these issues of uh hacking maybe issues of even kissing or the issue of handshake so it is very possible that the handshake will you know what's happening like the hi hello you know there will be no hugging, you know, you know, as you see your friend. So we need to keep to 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 to, uh, to be open to that possibility. Another thing we need to also keep in mind is that um, as all this is happening, it's fundamental to have a support system. Okay, we need to establish a support system where we can actually have people we can go and just talk, you know, just express, yourself, express yourself and talk about how you're feeling. All right, because we are all feeling a certain way. This is not a very easy situation to be quarantined. It's not an easy thing. So it's very, very, very important to have a platform. Okay, a place where you can actually go and talk. Another thing that I that's also important to to mention is the work model. The work model, or as we, as we call it, the industrial model, as we knew it, that is the nine to five. I feel has changed, or is going to change, which means people be now engaging more online. Okay, working online and working online also has its own. Uh, features so we need to brace ourselves for that so one we need to be more it uh, savvy okay you need to be more there's also a level of commitment and discipline to the work that you're doing all right and then also just how to juggle uh the fact that you're in the house and that you're working keeping in mind also in the house you've got your children among many other distractions so it would be very important to see how to go about that all right yes yeah so um you have talked about the support uh, support system but uh, mm. you, we, we've seen in the news recently that uh, what the government is doing it's currently ar ar arresting people and uh, mm -hmm. okay maybe if you if you're found outside um during now if you're not home by 7 a.m you get arrested and then you are put in quarantine mm -hmm. mandatory mm -hmm. quarantine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but now there is a there is one client who had asked mm -hmm. why are you bringing me to quarantine and yet mm -hmm. i am okay mm -hmm. there's something that they also mentioned that mm -hmm. while at quarantine nobody came even to talk to them they they were mm. just left there you know at least me and you we have social media here but mm. there are some people who are under who are quarantined and they mm. don't have someone to talk to all right mm. so mm. if they happen to watch this video all right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what can you tell them so that they can manage now the stress levels at this particular time okay um I feel that um, on two fronts, I think the Ministry of Health has also given a, a, a cancelling line, which is double one, double nine, okay? 
so I feel that if they feel they need some element of psychosocial support, they need to really articulate it to um, maybe the manager in charge of that particular center, okay? The second thing, um, of course, with uh, with guidance and support, of course, they, there's no harm, I believe, in them even forming their own support group within the quarantine, mm. okay? Observing, you know, the distancing and everything, they can do it, yeah? And talk and engage and share. So I feel those two things can happen. Okay, so... Mm. Um, there's a question here that has been posed by John. Mm -hmm. Can you see the question? It's yes. on the screen. Yeah, so yes. he's asking how should different personalities, sanguine, mm -hmm. phlegmatic, melancholic, and choleric, respond mm -hmm. to or handle each other in friendship, family, marriage, relationship, and workplace? <laughs> That's a very loaded question, I must, I must say okay but <laughs> this is what i say i think in any kind of relationship you are in it's very important to know the party either who the, who, who the person or the persons you are in a relationship with are whatever nature of relationship it is and part of that is not the kind of part of that is what is mentioned the sanguine so you need to know if this person is a quiet person surely they cannot have noise if yes. this person is a perfectionist, then surely they cannot handle uh, disorganization. They need, they need, they need organized. You need to be organized when you're dealing with them. So for me, it's just understanding the person who they are, their do's and don'ts, but also seeing what areas you, what areas, can, um, what areas you two can actually agree upon and uh, engage in a more effective and productive manner. All right. So um, yes. I also have a, I also have another question for you. Um, mm -hmm. There are some people now who have been laid off mm -hmm. at this particular period of time. Yes. They don't have even a source of uh, income. And yet mm -hmm. they have... Uh, children at home, they have dependents who depend on them. So at this particular moment, they are stressed. Mm -hmm. How can you, what can you say to them so that their energy levels now can, can, can be boosted? Wow, Violet, that's, this is actually, I believe a very tough one because I know it's affecting most people. And um, you know it's very difficult to 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 give advice to someone who who is really at the thick of things, you know, uh, especially it's something so traumatic as that, as losing as losing your livelihood. But what I can say is that resilience, 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 resilience. Do not give up. Yes, things are bad. Yes, you've lost your job. But at the end of the day, remember, we need to leave. And because we need to leave, and the way in which we know or knew on how to earn our daily bread has changed, then we need to create a new way, a new normal. So it is now important, incumbent, for people to start thinking very critically on what, on how they're going to earn the daily bread once this, this pandemic is done. And that should start now. Such that when things, when, when things are isn't, or when the dust settles in this pandemic, you're not starting from ground zero. You're now running. But I know it's not easy. It's tough. But all I can say is resilience, positive attitude, I, I will emphasize purpose to listen and uh, listen to positive talks, positive people. And of course, uh, the, for those who are spiritual like myself, prayer. Yeah, that's what I would say. Okay. Um, the, the other question that I have for you is, uh, you see like media houses, 
Mm-hmm. They are uh, now the employees now who who are working at, in various media houses. Uh, they mm-hmm. have just been informed that uh, their salaries have been cut by half. Mm-hmm. And uh, even so on television, now this is Kenya, that uh, like even at Royal Media Services, their salaries have been cut by 30%, mm-hmm. others 20%, and also Radio Africa. Mm-hmm. And this is causing uh, strain for the persons involved. Mm-hmm. What word of encouragement do you have for them at this particular point in time? And this is, and this is as a result of now the COVID-19 pandemic because they are not uh, getting uh, advertised. Uh, you know, like a, a, a media house, they run, uh, it, the operations are funded through advertisement. But now since right. everyone is at home, they are not receiving any funding. That is why they have decided that they are going to cut salaries. So what yes. is your message to these employees? What should they do? Like I said earlier, I'll repeat it again. Resilience and positive talk. And also remember this. Remember this pandemic has affected the entire world. It has affected the economics globally. I mean, you've just mentioned people have lost their jobs. People are sleeping. I say, I'm not saying it is right. At least they've got their job. And at least they are they're, they're going to get some money at the end of the month. Not what they're used to. Maybe it's not what they, they are supposed to get. But there is something that they'll get at the end of the month. That would mean several things. It would mean people need to readjust to the new to the current situation. Which for me, if you tell, if you ask me, is in order because this is a very uh, extraordinary time and difficult time for people across the world, and 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 back to our country, it's a very difficult time for Kenyans. So I say, for those who at least they have a they have a salary, but that being as it may, resilience, positive attitude. And also, it's time to rethink. Maybe All right. it's yes. Okay. Um, I also have a. I, ha- I also have another question for you. Um, now, with regard now to now the healthcare professionals, okay, mm-hmm. yes. who are working at the various uh, health centers. And you find mm-hmm. that you, they're supposed to be in hospital, but yet they don't have the materials, they like the PPE. Mm-hmm. And yet they're supposed to be at work. Mm-hmm. So at this particular point in time, you find that the nurse, the doctor, and the other healthcare professionals, they are wondering whether they should just uh, leave their job mm-hmm. or because there are some who are contemplating at this particular moment because there is a a, 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 a doctor in one of the counties i think you see um he just said the hospitals do not have equipment so he decided to leave all right but his decision had consequences okay mm-hmm. so what is your message now to the healthcare professionals considering that the PPE materials for preventing yourself from being infected by the COVID-19 is not there. And yet, as a healthcare professional, you are supposed to be at work. What mm-hmm. message do you have for them? So, so, yeah, because they are thinking a lot, lots of emotions at this particular point. Yeah, very true. Um, I'll, answer, I'll answer you in this way. I feel when it comes to personal protective equipment, I think that is solely on the government. The government needs to look into that. And I feel one thing that the pandemic has has brought to lighting, especially in our case, is the weakness in the healthcare system. 
right? And uh, truth be told, I mean, it's put the healthcare profession in a very, in a very precarious situation because here you are, you want to save lives, but you yourself, you are not protected. And remember, if you fall sick and God forbid you that the pandemic uh, kills you, then how then do you uh, even... Uh, take care or provide that health care to that sick patient. So um, for me, there's need now, there's, there's need for, uh, um, you know, uh, government intervention when it comes to the PPE. There's need to work on our healthcare systems, you know. I mean, that case you've just given about uh, Kisi Hospital not having equipment, very sad case scenario. So you don't have equipment, you do not have the gloves, then how then do you begin? So me, for, and I think it also leaves the healthcare professional not just exposed, but very traumatized at that. So for me, what I would tell them is one, to, um, to, to, to purpose to, you know, um, do a lot of self-care, yeah. Um, engage in, um, you know, deep breathing exercises. Um, uh, perhaps walks, talks. You know, talking to people. You know, get into a support group if you may, because it's a very traumatizing kind of a situation. Um, yeah, that, that's what I would say. That's what I would say. Ah, all right. Mm -hmm. So. Um... There is a friend of mine uh, who's also joining us in a few. Uh, she's been locked down in uh, in Italy, and mm -hmm. uh, she's she's going to share her emotions, what she went through. And mm -hmm. uh, while we wait, while we wait for her, mm -hmm. um, Albert, are you for the idea yes. that uh, people should now maybe find uh, new things that can keep them busy? like new hobbies or uh, monetizing uh, some of the talents that they have, or what message do you have for them? This is what I say. I say it's important, you know, like, I, I, Corona or no Corona, time is going by, hmm. all right? And the thing is, being horrendous as it may be, at the end of the day, you'll be held to account, either individually, or by persons, but I always believe the universe will hold you to account. So having said that, I think it's important to come up with activities. My opinion is every day have a schedule of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Do something, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to do one, two, three. It just gives that level of sanity because if you do not engage and especially engage your mind at this period in time, when uh, things have settled, and because I have a very strong feeling, when uh, things settle, the things things move very fast. You will take that much longer to catch up, and when you take that much long, longer to catch up, it means time will pass you by. So for me, it is very important to find things that will engage you. Yes whether it is reading a book, whether it is exercising, whether it is watching or something motivational or a combination of all that plus others. I think that is very important. Okay. So at this particular point in time, we are being joined by Grace Mageka. She's in Italy. Yes. And she's going to yes. share with us now how she handled her emotions because, you know, like Italy has been in, in lockdown since, uh, I think since February. So... Yes. Uh, daughter of Africa, Grace Mageka, welcome. Kindly introduce yourself to our viewers. Thank you so much. My name is Grace Mageka. I'm from Kenya, currently studying in Rome. And so I'm living and studying here in Rome. Uh, yeah, coronavirus found me here. I had just came back from Kenya for the Christmas holiday and New Year. So I came maybe like a month and then now we had that the virus is in italy so some parts of italy the northern part of the country so we didn't like we were not really scared we assumed it would be in the northern part of the country and that is it but suddenly the virus spread quickly and uh, on 9th of march we went like it was announced that uh, the country was going on a lockdown so from 10 people were staying inside the house so 
I remember before actually universities were closed before online, like we were to follow classes online the following week. Yeah, so um, when this thing came up, I'm, I'm one person who don't like like waking up in the same room, spending my time in the room. So like day and night, I'm mean, inside my room. So something what something that happened is that uh, during this period, I, I, imagine you're on, you're inside the room day and night, and it's like I felt like there was a war going on, and looking on the news. Like people are dying every day. So I'm like, I started getting scared or I got panic attacks, attacks that maybe it's also going to come to where I am. So that time I remember it was a, a very difficult time and uh, I was mentally stable. I Because even I couldn't sleep, I was so scared looking how people were dying. And I was imagining since we have been told we are gonna lock down. So what's going to happen? Following that, me, I was scared because that weekend, before the lockdown, we had gone to another city, which is Napoli. We risked, we had done our mask on, but we went like with my friends because it was a trip which we had planned earlier with my friends because she had a party day. So I was so uh, flicking because, listen, this virus, it takes like maybe seven to 14 days before it comes out or it starts to manifest itself to a person. So that period, remembering that we are going on lockdown is less than like maybe seven days. And you are imagining like you went out, you traveled away from the current city where you are living and you went to another city. This city, of course, there was still uh, like, oh yeah, there's a virus, but they were, we are not sure who is having the virus. So. I think what contributed to me is following what I had done in, the, in that weekend. I had gone to another city and I traveled in the bus. The bus has many people and these people, they are from different parts of the country, some from the north, so you don't know what the virus does in town. So after the 14 days, I started, of course, when I started panicking, having a lot of panic attacks, later when the 14 days passed, I was like, now maybe I don't have the virus, so I'm okay. So that time I had to quickly change my routine. After my lessons, I tried to do more extracurricular activities. And this was the feeling you feel like you want to be close to God. So I started my Bible study with a, a spiritual mom from Belgium. So we used to have a Bible study for one hour. Another friend joined me from UK and Taiwan. So we used to be like four people on our WhatsApp call and we discuss the Bible. And I, that, that one has been the tradition up to now. So besides that, how I was able to overcome this uh, um, like stress and everything. And remember, I'm alone in Italy. I don't have my family members here. So there's a time you feel like this was the time you needed to be close to your family so that you will be able to handle this situation together. But only that I'm away from my mom and my, my siblings, it is another stress. So besides like uh, doing Bible study activities, I started to like now work out, like it was time also to look for fit, like to check on my fitness. And uh, because uh, I was like trying to see if I am this fit, so I'm much also still doing it. Like I try to be busy after my school. I would be sometimes ends at four, like because we have lectures online after it finishes. I I do I I rest like four to five and then five PM I start up with the study five to six. After my friend comes, then we start working out like from six thirty to around uh, like also one hour, then I take a shower, I they prepare dinner, I start a new bit and then I sleep. So that has been my routine in that I have to be busy, the, despite the fact that I'm at home, to be able to handle this virus and I'm happy it became part of me. That's what, that's what I've been doing since we went on a lockdown for one month. And uh, we are so excited maybe it's like now the news, uh, the news is that we have like 3,000 people recovering from this virus like every day and we have no people dying. So like now the country is getting calm, like we don't have, you know, people do not have panic attacks at all because I remember from this period how like it was another world which was sad. People could come out at 1 o'clock to see 6 p.m. in the evening to sing from their balcony. 
being all sort of things like to show that we are together in solidarity, even sometimes doing some stuff in solidarity for the medics people. So on 4th of uh, May, we hope uh, the, the, the lockdown is going to be loosened in that they have said there are rules in that we can move out from 4th of uh, May, but we can't go to another city. We just operate in our city. I'm in Rome, so we can move around Rome, but with a mask. So, but the schools are yet to be announced when we are like going to school physically, but for now, everything is online. So I hope I've shared you like how I was able to undergo with this uh, panic attack regarding to COVID-19. Okay. So, so Albert, I know that you also know yeah. Grace. Uh, you can even <laughs> say hi to her. <laughs> hi, Grace. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Yeah. <laughs> so, that so, is very good. I mean, mm. uh -huh, uh -huh. Continue, continue, Albert. You know, I'm very happy. I mean, from what she's saying, she came up with very good coping mechanisms. You know, the prayer, the Bible study, you know the exercising she had she had a support system which is very important especially at this time and she had a structured day like i was saying it's important to structure your day so you know what to do so when things settle you don't start from you know you're not starting now you're just moving so you move faster and in that way you're able to utilize your time in a more effective manner especially at this time you know especially in our case right now in kenya where we are all quarantined in the house and then also thinking of innovative ways of how you're going to engage now once everything now is is done is done is it, once now once the pandemic uh, is settled now you think of other innovative ways of engaging not just in your day-to-day -day life but also in the work that you do yeah and then also appreciating our medics i think also like that and i think when in Kenya the other day they were choppers appreciating our medics so yeah those things are very important because people are very anxious people are very stressed people are very fearful you know it, it's a new pandemic a new virus people it, people, don't, people are yet to understand it so by the time people understand it we need to you know we we need to really rewire our mind and our thinking on how we engage on a day-to-day -day basis as people and how we are also engaged with the information about this particular pandemic and i like what grace has just said that you can tell they're getting communication from their government. Eh? The, from it, the Italian government is communicating, and that communication is creating some easiness. So they know now, okay, fine. We know these people have died, these people have recovered, now they're not dead. And I think even in our case in Kenya, we also need to commend the government in that. They're telling us there are no people who have been infected, there's the people who have died, and there's the people who have recovered. So it's not all gloom. And I feel when you have, even if you've got infections, but uh, no deaths and more recoveries, it means you're, you're actually, um, uh controlling you you know actually controlling this this pandemic isn't it grace i think that's yeah. the case also in in italy yes you when your your debts are not there it means now it is a way in which you're handling the pandemic although like she's rightfully put it it is important to still keep in mind certain um requirements such as the social distancing and wearing of the mask and then also the the movement across uh, across uh, uh, towns eh? or cities in Italy, but in our case, across counties. So I think there are a lot of similarities that uh, Grace, Grace has pointed out, but also she's also brought to light some of the things which I was mentioning, which I hope now our viewers will now can have actually seen and that they can now actually adapt. Yes, Grace. I want to say something, but also something interesting came up. Actually, the government of Italy was supporting people in that they... They were giving people like thirty k money for if in, if you are in Kenya you get thirty thousand Kenyan money, but yes, three hundred euro for food. So I like what happened now. It was being how it was working is that uh, there are some details which they ask where you live, you are tenant, and they have to prove. Like us, we couldn't uh, ask for the money because we are already under the Italian government scholarship because. They are the ones who give us money. They have given us a place to stay. Like now, I'm speaking from the hostel or dormitory. So we can't. There's no way we can say we are. In, we need that money. But there are some people or 
families who are being supported by giving uh, 300 euros and like they could come even to where you live they give an envelope or they give some photos to go do shopping up to 300 so i feel this was a good support like it helps to follow because 300 euros is a lot actually to for food only during this period so that's one aspect like support system also can come in in that way the way i had you speaking about of course people supporting each other but also consider those people who are not like uh well off in terms of finance they sh the government should look or look or find a way to go with this uh situation like uh, people they can't force people to stay indoors if they don't have food they have to find a way to to do their statistics statistics so well to know who and who is in need then the few people mm. they move there to give them the support and leave so people stay home Mm -hmm. right. I, 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 that is very that that is very true, Grace. Um, I think in the Kenyan case, um, I'd like to appreciate the, the effort the government has done, um, in the sense that um, the, 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 they've introduced certain fiscal policies. For instance, one, um, not taxing people earning less than twenty four thousand. Okay, reducing the tax from sixteen percent to fourteen percent VAT. And then what they've done also, they've dispersed, I believe, it's around, is it 8 billion to go to to the uh, much, I, I think, the vulnerable, the elderly people? So uh, those are some of the things they've done. Can they do more? Absolutely. Because like you've put it, and actually this is something that's also been mentioned by the CS during, during his briefings. You know, you don't just lock down. When you lock down, you have to keep certain things in mind. And one of them is provision of basic needs, for instance. How will people eat? You know, how will they be able to buy the basic needs? So I think, I believe these are some of the things that in the Kenyan government is mulling over in the eventuality. They decide things get to a state whereby uh, they have to lock down. But yes, Grace, I appreciate that. And I think it is because of what Italy has did earlier on that they are you are where you are right now. That yeah, lockdown, yeah. the fact that they're able to take care of, of your basic needs, it, it goes a very long way because it's very stressful. Because like you said, if you cannot go out, and you know, like I always say, like in Kenya, Kenya is mostly a physical economy, hmm? which means you have to go out there, they have to engage to get their daily bread. So for them, in the Kenyan case, they have to really think that if I tell these people, and remember in Nairobi, for instance, around 80% or thereabout are in the Jotali sector. So for me to tell you, you cannot go out, it means I need to ensure that I cater for your needs while you're in the house, which means what? Things such as your, your, your rent, your utilities like electricity and water, and also food, and not just that, even some money for you to, you know, um, be able to purchase certain items here and there but for me what i always say this pandemic which has done it has brought to light multiple things but for me most so one people's resilience how resilient are you as a person okay but also it has shown us gaps gaps in various sectors that need improvement it has shown and i think this is something globally gaps in the healthcare system i mean people across the world are lacking ppes i mean the other day you can see like for instance like in the us they have having issues with personal protective gears where not too long ago nurses are wearing garbage bags you know so you can see there are certain gaps that are coming out and my hope is once this is done then governments can come in um come together and see how they can actually um you know deal with those gaps in in a more effective manner yeah to add on what you have said coronavirus is good and bad uh what i'm happy but i pray that no more people die in that this virus is going to change way many many things one like the okay second on top of what you have said in italy also we have homeless people like in kenya we have street people i don't know where the street people in kenya are but in italy the homeless people who are the refugees when they come from africa they have been they were taken to churches like they were they had to find a place to keep them and give them food after they need comfortable and i believe going forward that's what is going to happen is that they have to find a way to fix people who are homeless and um, and try to provide them basic things and um, 
I, I, like generally like the way of life is going to change they are going to be more keen to make sure respect human rights of people whether you are uh, I, I don't know if you get my point so this coronavirus is going to change mindset of everything and now governments run around the world i agree all right so viewer um we've come to the end of the broadcast and uh okay before we end is there something that you'd like to add albert on the grace that you'd not mentioned before uh me what they just want to say just follow the best rules which uh, world that the organization has given us and try to stay safe we will overcome i'm not like I can't believe it that I've survived. That's what I have to say, because I was so scared. And knowing that earlier I had risked going outside or going to another place and there was the spread of the virus, I survived. People are no more dying now. But I ask you, don't do what I did. Try to stay home, uh, follow the rules, wash your hands, keep the distance. Like just my, my advice to you is that follow the rules of the World Health Organization. And it will be one. All right. What about you, Albert? And I'd like to end by saying that if I think people should really take care of their mind of their of themselves, especially at this time. Uh, watch your anxiety levels, watch your stress levels. I say purpose to engage in activities that, that will help you in in such things, for instance, things such as exercising, things such as talking to people or joining a support group, eating healthily. I also encourage people to also engage, uh, be active in their days, you know. Um, you know, engage your mind, read a book, you know, do something. But more so, I feel this is the best time to even, um, you know, have, change your total mindset and come up with innovations. You know, people are, you know, at this point in time, people are innovating. So the thing is, once the dust settles, you as a person, what new thing will you come out with? So I right. think it's important for to you know, use this opportunity to figure out uh, innovative, innovative ways in which you're going to engage across the board, whether it is as individuals or even at our work, in our work. Okay. So. Yes. Yeah, so thank you. So, um, yeah, so what I, I'd, I'd like to do right now is, uh, is to thank both of you for gracing the set and uh, even for sharing on uh, emotional intelligence. Thank you, Albert, for sharing on emotional intelligence, how to uh, manage our emotions during COVID-19. And also thank you, Grace Mageka, even for coming in to give a testimony of how you have managed, how you have utilized emotional intelligence to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic that has even wrecked Italy, all right? So, and even the entire world. So I want to say thank you to all of you for joining this particular platform. Thank you, viewer, for watching. And see you next time, because on, on Monday, we are going to discuss about uh, performing arts during COVID-19, all right? So the role of performing arts during COVID-19. So thank you, and God bless. Asanteni. Okay.